One of the great things about learning assembly language is it gives you the technical background to read Canoes, The Art of Computer Programming books. The Art of Computer Programming is a series of books written by Donald Knuth. He begins the project in 1962 and had originally planned to have five volumes. There are now seven volumes planned, but only the first three volumes are complete. Volume 4A was published in 2011 and Volume 4B was expected in 2019. The books are considered to be masterpieces in regard to their description and analysis of algorithms. Knuth won the Turing Award for his work in 1974. Bill Gates gave a famous review of the book. If you think you're a really good programmer, read Knuth's Art of Computer Programming. You should definitely send me a resume if you can read the whole thing. The books are considered as the exemplar on text on algorithms, with some readers comparing the experience to reading mathematical poetry. The book is also filled with challenging problems and mathematical concepts that will challenge you intellectually. There's also quite a bit of humor thrown in. Speaking of humor, the book begins with a procedure for reading the set of books. The flowchart associated with the procedure is shown on this slide. It even allows a little bit of time to sleep and relax while you read the book. In terms of looking at the procedure, an asterisk means that the section is optional, so you can go back and read it later. Essential sections lack the asterisk. And don't feel bad if you don't reach a terminal point. I started reading these in 1999 as part of the qualifying exams for my PhD studies, and I still haven't finished this procedure. The exercises in the book are also well structured and exceedingly detailed. Problems range from trivial to long-term research problems and are given by a two-digit radius. Zero, zero is an extremely easy exercise that can be answered immediately if the material of the text has been understood. These can be worked out in your head. Uh, problems in the 10 range are simple problems that make you think over the material you've just read, but they're by no means difficult. Problems in the 20 range are an average problem that tests basic understanding of the text material, but you may need about 15 to 20 minutes to answer it completely. Problems in the 30 range are of moderate difficulty and or complexity and they may involve more than two hours' work. Canoe says more if you keep the TV on. Problems in the 40 range are quite difficult or lengthy problems that would be suitable for a term project, and problems in the 50 range are research problems that have not yet been solved satisfactorily as far as the author knew at the time of writing. The scale is logarithmic, so 17 would be a bit simpler than average. Arrows indicate recommended exercises, while M and HM denote math and higher math-oriented problems. The text begins with a chapter on basic concepts, the first of which is algorithms. The term algorithms comes from the Persian textbook author Muhammad ibn Musa al-Khurazami, who developed his work on rules for restoring and equating around 825 Common Era. The definition used by Knuth is a finite set of rules that gives a sequence of operations for solving a specific type of problem. Knuth indicates that there are five important features of algorithms, so let's have a look at these. An algorithm must always terminate after a finite number of steps. A procedure that has all the characteristics of an algorithm, except that it possibly lacks finiteness, may be called a computational method. Euclid had a geometrical construction for the greatest common measure of the lengths of two line segments, but did not terminate if the given lengths were incommensurable. Definiteness. Each step of the algorithm must be precisely defined. The actions to be carried out need to be rigorously and unambiguously defined for each case. Since natural languages can be ambiguous in nature, Knuth gives many of the algorithms in the computer language known as Mixol that we'll see later. An algorithm has zero or more inputs, quantities that are given to it, and it also has one or more outputs that are quantities that it provides as a result of its work. Effectiveness. An algorithm is generally expected to be effectively computable. Its operations must be sufficiently basic that they can be done exactly and in a finite amount of time. Given an algorithm, we want to demonstrate its performance characteristics. There's often more than one solution to a particular problem, and we often want to know which one is the quickest, which one is the most adaptable, which one's the easiest to understand, or which one is the most elegant. In terms of efficiency, Knuth introduces the concept of T sub M, which is the number of times step N is calculated in an algorithm. He later covers big O notation in the mathematical preliminary section of the text. This is Euclid's algorithm for finding the greatest common divisor of two integers, M and N. Here, E is the identifying letter, with the numbers being the steps. Comments are in parentheses, and the arrow is a replacement operator. M, arrow coming from N, means that the value of the variable M is to re be replaced by the current value of N. If you see a double arrow in Knuth's notation, it means that there's an interchange. And it may be worth having step E0 here to interchange the two values if M is somehow less than N. The heavy vertical line at the end of the text indicates that that's the end of the algorithm. It's also possible to visualize this algorithm with a flowchart if you'd like to do that. 
So let's take a look at an example of this algorithm in action. Here we want to find the greatest common divisor of 544 and 119. So we start by dividing 544 by 119. We get a result of 4 with a remainder of 68. We set m equal to 119, and n is equal to 68 as a result of that. Now we take 119 and divide it by 68. We get a quotient of 1 and a remainder of 51. r becomes 51, with m is equal to 68, and n becomes 51. We again repeat the division here, 68 divided by 51, and we get a quotient of 1 and a remainder of 17. m becomes 51, and m becomes 17. When 51 is divided by 17, we get 3 with a remainder of 0, so the algorithm terminates. The greatest common divisor of 119 and 544 is therefore 17. We can see that this algorithm is a finite set of rules that gives the sequence of operations for solving a specific type of problem. It also has finiteness, definiteness, input, output, and is effectively computable in its operations. Join us next time when we take a whirlwind tour of the mathematical preliminaries, which will be the equivalent of ask a Harry graduate student about what you should have covered in two semesters of